You may have seen a video, I just saw the video uh, going around in which a young woman asked some really good questions about math and science. And so I'm going to try and get this in one take if the deer don't make my dogs go barky. I got a few things to say in answer to those questions. So here we go. So math actually starts from two places, counting and measuring. And these are different. These are very different activities with different ideas of what, what's right. And as it turns out, the same system of numbers and the same operations on those numbers work for both. So uh, there's no, well, there are some good reasons for that, but they're kind of subtle and um, uh, involve something that didn't come along until a lot later, which is calculus. With calculus, you can show why counting and measuring end up being the same idea or the same math, but that's not obvious, which is how you know it was a good question. So how do we know in math that something is right? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, another word that she used is formula. Now formulas are one of the things that people see early on in their math education, and so they kind of loom large. They use a lot of symbols. They're kind of scary looking sometimes, and a lot of math education, early math education, really emphasizes knowing and memorizing formulas. But really, as soon as you say formula, you've left the world of mathematics and you've gone into physics, or something derived from physics engineering. Because when we say formula, we mean a rule for calculating something that um, we want to know the answer to. And so how do we know if we got the right formula? Well, simple. It gives you the right answer reliably. Now, formulas do appear in mathematics. If you're going to write out a, um, a function, we often write a formula for it. Um, but really, the word formula suggests that we're talking about physics. And uh, there we go with that. So let's talk about what it means for something to be right in mathematics. So what is math? Um, a lot of answers to that question. My favorite is that math is a game that we play with rules. All games have rules, right? But math is a game where the object of the game is to make up good rules. How do we know if a rule is good, really? A rule is good if when you play the game by those rules, by that using that rule, it's fun. It does something interesting or useful. So a rule, first of all, has to be consistent with the other rules that you're using. But it has to do something useful. And if it does, then it's a good rule. Now, this is why mathematics has branches, because you can play by different sets of rules. Uh, my brother is a wonderful game designer. He, uh, not computer game usually, although he's been doing that lately, but he, uh, he can take a, a two or three board game sets, combine them, and make up a game that's fun to play. That's math, okay? If you make up a rule and it's fun to play math by that rule, then it's a good rule and we've got new math. Um, and so when you're doing math, you alternate two states of mind. Playing by the rules means operating correctly, consistently with a set of rules that you've chosen to operate by, and then you take the answer that comes. That alternates with a creative phase where you go, what if we try this? Now, it's an error, and this is, again, early math education is, a lot, is about basically beating out the creativity from people so that they follow the rules all the time, the rules. Okay, whatever rule is in the textbook they're teaching from, that's, those rules were made up. We made them canonical. They become the rules for K through 12 math because they're useful in engineering, which gets us back to measuring and counting. Accounting, engineering, surveying, buying and selling things, using that set of rules, the ones you learn in grade school, gives you the right answer in those problems. That's why they're magic. They're not magic, they're just conventional. Okay, so, we, math is a game we play where the object is to make up good rules, and we know they're good because when we play by those rules, we get good answers or interesting answers or have something that's fun or useful. Okay, what about physics? So. Again, such a fruitful set of questions. So in physics, and all the sciences derived from physics, 
we're interested in predicting things, um, analyzing things, but more importantly, we're interested in gaining some understanding about the thing that we're studying. And so the formulas of classical physics tell us something about how the world works, or almost tell us something about how the world works, because they're approximations. That's the thing about measuring. When you're in the measuring world, whether you're, you're looking at the speed of light or um, you know, the size of a brick, you're always dealing in approximations. And so we're interested in how accurate is that approximation? Under what circumstances does, does a process of approximation remain accurate? Okay, so um, we need to tell, talk about physics bef before and after two main people. And one of the best known names in physics, Newton and Einstein. And they both did really important things with how mathematics and physics relate to each other. So before Einstein, you know, Newton kind of marks the peak of the before Einstein physical world. Uh, th the mathematics of physics was mainly about discovering formulas that explain, how do you put that in quotes, the data. So if you do a bunch of measurements, like Kepler spent his life doing orbit calculations. People with telescopes would tell you where a planet was at a certain time. And he took those numbers and calculated from that what those orbits were laboriously discovered they were ellipses, but he didn't understand why they were ellipses. It took Newton to do that. But we had, so would the same thing happen in electricity, all right? Um, we had laws about how electricity, uh, both current, magnetism, pr uh, voltage, all those things, we had laws about how they worked. Maxwell put those together to explain waves, electromagnetic waves. Um, so, if, so in that era, a formula was good if it matched the data, and if again you could do you could do a calculation using those formulas to extrapolate to new data and then do a measurement and confirm it. So that that's that's good physics, good mathematical physics. I um, to do gravity and to explain those elliptical orbits, Newton and Leibniz invented calculus. Calculus is the mathematics of change, put to put it simply. If something is changing over time usually, you need, a, 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 you need something more than just measurement. You can't just take a number, put a ruler on something, take on a number. A, a single number doesn't tell you enough. So they invented calculus. And calculus connected all those observations to each other in a way that allowed um, us to understand something about gravity that explained those elliptical orbits. So that's why we, we, we hold Newton in such high regard, is that he, he provided that connection. And uh, Leibniz provided better notation. Again, we play by both of their rules. We find we like Leibniz better, so that's what we teach. Um, although we still use both for different things, which confuses students, um, justifiably. So Newton gave us the mathematics of change. And this project went on for centuries of taking experimental observations, looking at the numbers, and, and discovering formulas that gave us both a way to predict those numbers and some insight into what was going on behind them. That petered out in the 20th century because some things weren't working. Specifically, light wasn't acting the way classical physics wanted it to. Uh, some other things weren't. And so Einstein did something new with what's truthy about mathematics. Um, he looked at what was wrong with the way the formulas interconnected with each other. And based purely on that, based on the mathematics of how those formulas connected with each other, he uh, and using a, a piece of math called the Lorentz transformation, another L guy that doesn't get enough credit, he uh, he connected he reconnected them differently at a, in the mathematics, and that made predictions about physics that he could then go out or other physicists and went out and and proved, demonstrated that those predictions were right, and they in specifically in how they differed from using the older rules, the Newton's math. 
And so this started a whole new project. The 20th, physics in the 20th century was largely about doing what Einstein had done, but in other, other fields, other parts of physics. Um, looking at the math, coming up with new math, things like string theory you've probably heard of. I have no idea what it is, and it appears to be discredited, but it was basically a new way of looking at the math. It made predictions. Some of those kind of worked out, some didn't. Um, but that's how we know in physics if something is right, is if it makes good predictions. And that's very different from, how, from math, where we can have more than one kind of math. If they're both fun, we keep both. Um, and in physics, we have kept Newton's, Newton's formulas we still use all the time because in low energy, everyday states, anything you can physically survive being around, Newton's laws work great. It's only in high energy, unusual circumstances, motions of stars, things like that, that you, get, that you need to go beyond Newton, which uh, we do. Um, and again, this gets into, the math also helps us understand the world. Understanding, uh, Einstein's formulas predicted that you can interchange matter and energy. That wasn't an experimental result. That came out of the math. And then they were able to demonstrate it um, physically, experimentally. So, um, like I said, that, that defined the 20th century uh, project in physics, was to go out and see what else we could do this kind of thing mathematically with. So um, to go back to our questions that we started with, truth is, in math and physics, is a bit more of an interesting topic than most people seem to think. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Have a good day.